Well, I was showing you how you could advance and re to the next cylinder by pressing F9 or next lobe, and I pressed F9, and unfortunately, that turns the screen recorder off. So this test, uh, this demo has been split up into two inadvertently. So anyway, um, but I just want to show it jumped to exhaust number one, the next one in line. And I want to show you something here also on our screen. This is true of a lot of our stuff. You can see here I'm, I'm dragging the corner of this to get bigger. And now if you want a bigger display, bigger numbers or whatever, you can do it. Uh, this is drawn a little off center. And I'm going to show you if we close out of this and go back into the record screen, now everything gets drawn correctly. So if you want to resize, you can do that. I want to show you something on our webcam here on when we actually rotate the cam. I just want to show you a few things. We start on, uh, on this, I'm still on number one intake. Uh, we start on base circle, away the nose is down. And if you're turning uh, the cam, and you can do it by hand, it's not real fussy. I'm going to show you how it's done. Um, you, don't, you don't want to turn it up here, right next to it, because you are actually bending the cam a little bit. You'd rather turn it back here on this lobe. Uh, you don't probably have to go back this far, but if you, the further you get from this lobe, the less bendy you're going to put on the cam. So here I'm on base circle. Base circle is not a real critical measurement, so you can do it fairly fast. And that's about how fast you can turn it, right there. You can start and stop. When you get to the lobe, I recommend going slower. This is probably slower than you'd have to go. Now you're back on base circle, you can turn it fast. Uh, I didn't have the thing turned on, so it didn't beep at me. It would have beeped when it got to 400 degrees of rotation. That's what the normal, we measure 400 degrees, and we look at how that 40 degrees of overlap is looking. We keep track of that to see if there's any corrections that need to be made in the data. So that's some tips on turning the cam. Not very fussy. You can start and stop, both any point. Okay, here's our test when we're all done. We've measured all 16 lobes. We've got all the data drawn here. And what a lot of people are going to want to do is we have a nice report. Click on reports. And intake and exhaust compare all lobes. This is a real nice report. How many cylinders report? Report all the cylinders we measured and make a report. And there it is. Here's the resulting data. And you can see here we have that 102 center line we told it to do on intake number one. But all the others are a little bit different. They're pretty close. They're only a few tenths off. This one here might be the worst off, 102.46, about half a degree off. But they're all pretty close. Um, here's a cam advance. This is lobe separation here. Um, and how much advance? And see, we got three and a half degrees of advance, the duration. So here you have a nice, um, you have a nice, uh, nice summary of of this cam. Up here at the top, we have a summary of what's happening on intake number one. So that's kind of constant, no matter what kind of report you make. Now, a nice feature of the program is, let's say you were getting halfway through the test and you had to stop for some reason. And like I said, everything's indexed off of number one intake. If you get halfway done, all you have to do is remeasure number one intake. Go up here, click on, I mean, get intake one highlighted, record, and measure number one intake again. And then you can start back up after you do that. Now it's re-indexed the rotary encoder. And you can start up right on number five, number six cylinder, wherever you left off, and continue on. When you get pretty good at this, you should be able to measure all 16 lobes. should take about, you know, five minutes probably, maybe a little more. Uh, but it really can go fast. A couple last things I want to say before I uh, let you go. Um, just want to show you how you switch to another cylinder on the cam stand. What you do is you loosen up the knob, hold the lifter up so it clears the lobe. Go to the next lobe. Here we are on exhaust number one and retighten this. Remember to retighten this. Uh, like I said, with a flat tap, you could probably even leave that loose. But on a roller, you want to tighten that up so this straightens right up and this thing gets directly on top of the, uh, of the lobe. Another thing I'd like to say uh, for rollers, most aftermarket rollers are, are three-quarter inch diameter balls. Some of them are eight-tenths. Most are three quarters of an inch. Uh, we have what we call a universal roller. 
this is a three quarter inch ball so that you can drop that in. This is 0.842. This one here we only offer 842, the GM size uh, of, of lifter diameter. And you can see here, if this thing rotates or whatever, it's always a three quarter inch diameter. And it's a handy little thing to have if you're doing a lot of rollers. I'll show you some quick graph options we have here. We can click on graph up at the top of the main screen. It says, do you want intake and exhaust valve data? That would be taking the rocker ratio and last into account. Or do you want cam data? I'm going to say cam data. And you want to graph lift, yes. Velocity, acceleration, jerk, your choice. I'm going to keep it simple by just doing lift. And do you want to do any uh, additional filtering? Um, if you're doing velocity and acceleration, you're going to need some additional filtering to make that look good. Which cylinders do you want to graph? you got three choices here. You can, number one, which is most, every, you'll always measure, almost always measure number one. Uh, you want to do all of them, which I'm going to choose, or you could do this pick. Pick lets you say, I want to just graph cylinder four and seven for whatever reason. Uh, it lets you pick out just specific lobes, and you can compare that then to specific lobes on another, on another cam or another test. I'm going to do all here to keep it simple. Let's graph all the lobes. And here's all the lobes. And you can see they're almost all exactly on top of each other. Now, on a higher res computer, you're going to be able to see this a little better. But we go low res to make these movie files faster to download and smaller files. But uh, we can put a cursor line here, let's say here. I clicked on the line, and here's all the data, all the readings at that particular point for both cams. I'm going to turn the cursor line off because I'm going to zoom. You have to turn the cursor off if you're going to zoom. And now I'm going to zoom in on this. And here you can see all these lobes on the exhaust are pretty close. But this one right here, this is number seven. And if you want to see what that was, you can go over and click on a line. And you can see that's the one that's flashing. Number seven is quite a bit lower on lobe lift than the others. 0.373, where everything else is 0 0.378, 0 0.379. So it's about uh, 50 thou low. Is that 50 thou? No, it's 5 thou. I'm sorry. It's only 5 thou low. It just lets you know how precise this thing can be. Um, and since I zoomed in, I'm going to put it back in full scale. To zoom, you just put the cursor in the upper left corner of the area you want to zoom in. Let's say you want to look at this overlap. Hold the mouse button down and drag it. Release the mouse button, and there you are. You've zoomed in on that particular area. You want to go back to full view. Click on that. This concludes our demo. Uh, more demos of this will talk to you how you can do more analysis in uh, graphing or how you can measure TDC on the stand with our TDC bridge so you can measure the dowel pin location and such. Thank you.